Last episode, we built a small bridge out of girders and a large train out of logs, but now we need to build somewhere for that train to go. So in this episode, we gather a whole bunch of resources to build a huge storage warehouse to offload incoming trains and stash everything away for future projects. And this is an episode I've been looking forward to a lot. A large centralized storage is something I always like to have. I mean, just look at what I did in my hardcore world. And thanks to the mods in this pack, it shouldn't be too difficult. And as I run around this area, you may also notice it's looking a lot tidier that all the stone has gone. It's all been replaced with grass and I've also extended it out a little bit So we've got a lot more land to work with I basically had a lovely relaxing weekend watching a little bit of Downton Abbey and placing some blocks oh, I, I cannot find the words to say how I feel Definitely wasn't having a midlife crisis. But if we have a look over here now, it's definitely a lot better. We've got so much space to work with, and this should, hopefully, be enough space to put down a large storage warehouse where we can offload the trains, put everything where it needs to be, and prep it for going elsewhere in future. And it's all going to be thoroughly exciting. But before we can get to the fun stuff, I do need to go get some resources because I've decided I kind of want to make this a big brick building, a classic industrial era warehouse looking type thing. But for that, we're going to need a whole lot of clay. And there's a number of ways I can get clay. We can automate it. We can crush cobble into gravel, into sand, into clay. But to be honest with you, I don't really want to do that just yet. We're saving that project for something in future. We're going to be building a big old factory to handle that sort of stuff. So I don't really want to just build something intermittently. So that means... We're going to go exploring. We've got plenty of rivers around here where we can just dig up all the clay we could possibly need. However, I, I still want to know what else is around me. And to be honest, I think I want to go up to the north here because we're still looking for the perfect place for our next project, which is going to be a lovely mining town. And although I quite like this area down here, I do kind of just want to make sure there's nothing else here we're missing out on. And while we do that, we'll pick up a whole bunch of clay as well. So I need to sort out my inventory, fill up my jetpack fuel, and then we should be good to go. And I should probably fix my tools as well. My shovel is absolutely knackered. I think we're just about good to go. Oh yeah, you may also notice that I've uh, removed my farm. I need to find somewhere else to put that. For now, I've just kind of jammed all the animals into here. We'll figure something out better for them at some point, but, but it had to be removed. Look, industrial expansion. Rain, honestly. I'm about to go on an adventure. One last thing we do need to do is give our new horse a new name. And this time, we're going to go with Dill. Sticking with the cucumber family. But Dill is an extremely speedy boy. Look at that. 13.37. That's almost as fast as you can get. This is awesome. But let's go explore up north and see what we can find. Oh. Well, that's a bit disappointing. We've travelled 7,000 blocks and found nothing but Savannah, a tiny bit of plains and then an ocean. Yep, I can confirm that was a complete waste of time. But while I was flying around in this wonderful area over here, what I did remember is that down here somewhere we found a cave, and that cave was a lush cave. So I'm thinking if we just head down that way and go to a lush cave, that's going to be a much better way of getting clay than digging up rivers. And we don't have to travel very far to get there either. That was a waste of a trip up north. Aha! I see an azalea tree right over there, which means... There'll be a lush cave down there, right? Yeah, look at all that clay. Amazing. Although while we're here, let's grab some rooted dirt as well. And this was incredibly close to my home. Why don't I just do this in the first place? Rooted dirt distraction is over. We managed to get a decent chunk from that. This is good. Ah! Well, I think I've taken this cave for all it's worth. I can't find any more clay anywhere else, regardless of how far down I go. But this wasn't the one I was looking for in the first place. So if we can get back up to the surface here, let's carry on to where we were actually heading and maybe we can find more. Just stumbled across another lush cave. Once again, wasn't actually the one I was aiming for, but clay is clay. So let's light up a little bit and then steal everything we can get our grubby little mitts on. We've got close to 3,000 clay now. I think that should probably be enough. So let's steal this. Yoink. And fly home. Now to get all of this processed, the easiest way is probably going to be via our crushing wheels. So let's just do that and that. If we chuck all of the clay balls into this drawer up here. And then once they're done, what we're going to need to do is to crush them, basically. We want to compact them into bricks. And I'm thinking... We probably just adapt one of the machines we've already got. This one might be the easiest because we can just basically have everything go into there, get crushed and come out and go into this one here. We just need to replace this top bit and get some power to it. So let's just borrow this. Yoink. Place this up here. And it doesn't need to be fancy. Janky is fine. So I reckon we can just stick in a bunch of cogs along here. 
And in theory, if we chuck these in here, that should compress them down into bricks. Perfect. The box is fully loaded with all of the clay bricks. We just need to wait for this now, really. This could take a moment. Stop everything. I was just browsing my YouTube stats while waiting for everything there to compress, and it turns out that 78% of you that watch these videos aren't even subscribed. What's all that about? And we're somehow getting close to 100,000 subscribers, so if you are enjoying this series, then please do consider hitting that bright red button down the bottom there, and maybe we can get to 100k by Christmas. And it has also occurred to me, although we're standing here waiting for these things to actually compress, we could actually be up there sorting out the foundation for this build, couldn't we? So let's take a nap, grab some tough, and go lay something out, I guess. Tough does seem to be our go-to block for foundations after all. So the initial plan over here is to put in a giant warehouse, basically, and what we want to do is maybe add a couple more vaults along here as well, so there's multiple unloading points for the trains, but basically we want everything to come off the trains and into these vaults, then we're going to want it going into a building, and then once in there, it needs to get sorted into all the different chests. And potentially any overflow, we could put in some additional vaults. Although our storage room is going to be primarily made out of storage drawers, so we could void excess items, but I don't know how I feel about that. I'm a bit of a hoarder. So let's just start placing down some blocks and mark out a rough square where we can put the warehouse first. Well, that's a mighty big platform, and now I guess we need to put a mighty big building on it. So what do we want to do here? Maybe we should start about here, and as I say, I do want this to look like a sort of old-school industrial factory. So we're going to have, like, a big room in the middle, and then bits down the side that have got a shorter roof. I think that's the kind of look I'm going to go for. Basically, think that shape. And because odd numbers are easier to work with, what we'll do is we'll do seven for that side, and then we'll do maybe five for a doorway. And then another three, and then another seven. I mean, that does leave us quite a lot of space over here, but... We could probably do something with that. There is a train after all. Maybe we can make a small platform. I don't know, but let's get the rest of this little bit outlined and we'll see how big we're looking. So as a core building shape, I think that works. We'll have some sticky outy bits over here maybe and potentially down the front here as well. But I think that should be big enough, hopefully. So the next step is going to be to get the shape of the building actually up and I might get a roof on as well and sort of bring you back in once we've just got a big old empty box made of two different blocks. But I won't leave you in silence. You may as well have a cheeky little beardy montage. Well, I mean, we've certainly got a long way to go, but the basic shape is in. We can see the size of the thing, and, uh, well, it's pretty big. But what I need to do now is to get all the detail -y bits in. We need to get some windows in, probably on the side bits here. I want to put a big spinny fan at the top there for some ventilation. We need to get windows on the sides. And to be honest, I really don't like how sort of flat this side is here, so I might just build a big sticky outy bit for no apparent reason. And then inside, we've got plenty of space on the ground floor here, and we've got a small upstairs as well. And then we'll also have the railway coming in this way. I think that's how we're going to move things around. We'll use a narrow gauge track, I think. And we'll just have that come out here, pick stuff up from the vaults, and then go back inside and probably loop round, maybe? I mean, it might end up coming out this wall here. I don't really know. I haven't really thought that far ahead yet. So for now, let's just dig out some windows, get some shape to this building, get a little bit of detail, and sort out some texture as well. So let's put that music back on. channel members probably just got a bit nostalgic with that music track there we have not had that in a video for about two years but it is an amazing track it was made by jono smithers uh, who you can actually find on youtube i'll link in the description about two years ago and yeah i just absolutely love it i just kind of forgot it existed for a while but wasn't that wonderful and not only was that wonderful we are making some good progress here as well on our building it's looking a bit better from outside we've still got a little bit more to add but the actual building itself i think is looking pretty good although it does need some lights 
In fact, let's quickly add some lights now. There we go. That's better. So I do have a rough plan, I think, of what we're going to do on the inside and how storage is going to work. I've been thinking about it while I've been texturing up the building and sorting out everything else on the outside. And yeah, hopefully this plan is going to work. But apart from all the lovely details we've added, such as the windows at the top and the chimneys, I've actually used some of the smokestacks from the trains this time, just so we get the occasional puff of smoke like that, instead of the consistent smoke we get from campfires like over there. But I've also added this big chunk of building on the side, and I think the main sort of entrance, at least from our base side, what we're going to do is have a path going down this way, have some stairs or something, and then it's going to go into an entrance on this side here. This then opens out into our extension bit and so on. And I think I may put another door or two here, which is why I've kind of left that wall blank at this stage. So with the exterior of the building looking good, even if the ground around it doesn't, I think that's a good enough spot to try and build up the inside here. And I think the basic plan is going to be to have sort of maybe three or four sections on this side that are going to house all of our sort of normal storage items. And then on this side, we'll have our bulk storage, which once again, will probably have a few different sections. But yeah, this is all going to be sort of one by one drawers, and this will all be two by two drawers. And I'm hoping that's going to give us plenty of storage moving forward. But if not, we've also got the upstairs we can use as well. So it's not the end of the world. And I seem to have a hole in my ceiling. Let's get rid of that. Now, how do we want to do this? Let's start by maybe just getting in some kind of a frame. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Always go with odds. And we'll just put a beam in here that goes all the way across the top. So if we were to split all of this bit into sevens, what's that going to leave us with? So we can get four sections of seven in, and then we've got like this weird little bit. And then we've got another section of seven, and then we've got the main entrance. So it kind of works. And yeah, I th I'm thinking I really do actually want to put some doors in on this bit here. So maybe, maybe something like that. Well, maybe they should be bigger sort of warehouse shuttery door type things. So something a bit more like that. Let's just get rid of that bit of window. And then we can also actually frame in the doors this way, can't we? But yeah, I think we can get that to work. We'll come back to that later. For now, let's try and actually work out how the storage is going to work in here. So we're going to want a bunch of storage drawers. Make sure we get a trim in to attach them as well. So something like that seems to fill the room quite nicely. But I don't like what's going on with the edges here. Maybe girders can solve this problem. We do love girders. Yep, okay, looking good. I just want to sort out the ceiling now. I don't like how that's looking. So can we just pull some slabs across here, maybe? In fact, we might be able to get some stairs at the top there, which does cover up a few of the slots on the storage. But to be honest, I quite like that shape, actually. And then if we do the ceiling like that, we should, in theory, be able to hang a lantern in the middle and give it light. And I mean, basically, as simple as that, that should work, right? And then if we were to grab a draw trim and then do the same on this side and then what we should be able to do is put a draw controller i mean we're gonna have three sections here so hopefully we can get away with having a draw controller on one of these pillars and it'll affect all three sections that'd be nice wouldn't it but either way i like the simplicity of that i think it's really going to work let's just sort out these other two sections here and then we'll figure out what to do about the rest of it. Progress is being made. We've got the first three areas sorted out here. And now I want to sort out this bit here. And uh, it's a little bit weirder, isn't it? Um, let me think about this. So what I could do, potentially, is put a whole bunch of the workshop benches in here. Because it would be quite handy to have some over here as well. I know we've got them in a basement in a building down there. But if we had access to workbenches in here, that could be quite helpful. And then maybe what I could do in this room here is just make a really big room that stores like all the weird variants of stuff. Like these pillars here and these planks and all sorts. Yeah, maybe that's not such a bad idea. So if we were to have drawers going literally all the way across here, I guess. Same on this side. And then we'll have these going up really high, although we might need to put in a way to access them as well, I guess. I'm not entirely sure, but either way, we've run out of jungle drawers. So let's go make a bunch more of these and see if we can get this from here figured out. And potentially this bit here as well for the workstations. There we go. So what I'm thinking is a big old wall like this. And uh, yeah, that should be just about enough space, hopefully, to hold at least a good chunk of the different variants of blocks we're using but we also want to get the workbenches in so i'm gonna work out how we can do this this is really not a lot of space here is there what we can maybe do is have like a little gap in the wall here because it is mainly for this stuff over here 
but there's not quite enough room for all of them. I wonder. Maybe I should put one over the back here. I guess the question is, which one, though? I mean, the flowery one does look pretty cool. It's nice and colourful. And then maybe we could turn this into, like, a little room, just block it off at the back here. Yeah, I think that works quite well as just a small little room here. So for now, I'm going to call that section done. We are, of course, still going to make all the floor and everything else around here look nice. But for the actual layout, that definitely works. So let's get some doors in here. We're going to try these oak trap doors. And then we'll frame the outside here to have little archways, a bit like what we've got around the other side. And then let's give these some texture. Ah! Let's add a couple of lanterns here. Maybe we should do that in a couple of places down here, actually. Right, looking good. I think we're just about ready. I mean, we could do it with a couple of doors in there. But other than that, I think we're just about ready to start figuring out the other side here. I think what I'll start by doing is sort of continuing this same structure across. So if we bring these over, and we'll have the same kind of gaps, I think. And what I want to do here is just have a whole wall of one by one drawers. And this is going to handle our bulk storage. We're just going to have this pretty much all the way along here, I think. So I've got all those drawers in, but what we need to do now is figure out this rail, because this basically needs to connect up to here and bring everything in and then drop it off somewhere for this. I could bring the rail up, but to be honest, I think I actually want to sink the rail down instead. So if we dig out a nice channel for it here, my thinking is we can have it sort of go through here and loop round. Maybe it should loop round right at the bottom here. Yeah, there's a bit more space here, so we'll have it loop round and then maybe drop off here at this point. We've got a gap here, so it would be nice to make use of it. And then we can just send it on that way and out that wall and loop back round. That should do the trick nicely. Channel is dug. Let's get something linked up here. Question is, is there actually enough space to get a corner in? Oof. It's going to be close. It's going to be tight. Looks like we can just about get it in if we dig out a little bit more of this corner here. Okay, that works. Although it's a little bit sunk down, isn't it? Right, what can we do about that? We could try jungle planks. Or do we prefer dark oak planks? Or we have a third option, which is to use something like andesite. I think that does the trick nicely. Excellent. Before we can do any more in here, though, I need to figure out how we're going to do this outsidey bit. And I think the first thing we're going to do is add more volts here. So we'll probably end up with four volts. And to be honest, more for the looks than the actual storage space. And there's a bunch of other stuff I need that I also don't have. So let's go tidy up our inventory, probably go to bed. And then when we come back, we can make a start on the outside part of this. Oh, that's actually looking really cool. So the first thing I think I want to do is to add a few more drop-off points here because, well, we're going to have different sized trains coming in here and different carriages, and it would be nice if they had a few options on where I can actually put the storage interface. So if we do this, then we've got sort of four different places where a carriage can hook up. We might end up with some over the top as well in future, but for now, this should be fine. So let's just get a bunch of belts on these. And then we're going to transfer this power to the other side here as well. And if we put a belt in here, and we need another one there, I wonder if we can power that from this side. Just like that, with an andesite casing and a storage interface there. Now let's quickly work out a train that can sit here as well. So I don't really want to start the train there, so let's actually move this forward a space to there. We'll use that bogey. And if we put a storage interface there, and we'll put one facing that way for the drop-off, that should work. Stick a vault in the front for the storage. It turns out that as long as these interfaces are actually attached to the same contraption as a storage thing, they don't actually have to be attached directly to the storage, which is great because it does offer up a few more design opportunities. He says while building a train with six blocks, get all that glued together and assemble the train. Look at that, it connects. Excellent. And then what we need is funnels that exit the vaults there and one there as well. The ones that enter the vault can go here. Let's quickly make this look nice while we're here as well. Okay, so that is all good to go. The station is two spaces ahead of where the actual drop-off is. So let's go over here. Let's say, for example, we want the drop-off to be there. We'll put this there. We can probably just get away with hiding that in the wall there, I think. And then let's quickly take this train round. Get that parked up so we can see exactly what we're dealing with here. Now, the question is, if I put a draw controller here, put a slave on the back, and then put draw trims in all the way across, is locking this set of drawers going to lock these? It is. Does it go all the way? No, not quite. Oh, although that is probably 
because I haven't actually put the trims in yet. Let's get these actually connected. Maybe that'll help. Now does it work? They are locked. They are locked. Are they locked all the way down to the bottom? They are. Amazing. So we can just use that one drop-off point for this entire wall. Excellent. And I could just do it on this side, but I want to make things look a little bit more interesting. So what we're actually going to do is stick a belt in there, cover that up with some casing, put an exit funnel there. Oh no, I've run out of funnels. Let's just steal this one for now. No one's going to notice. But if we have that as an input, and then I just need to get power over here. And to be honest, I reckon we can probably just run it off of this thing again. And that is now powering that belt. Excellent. So what I want to do is set all the filters for the logs here, because that's all we've got coming in at the moment. So let's give them all a home of their own. Then we just need a train driver. You'll do, sir. Come along with me. And you can sit there, sir, if you don't mind. Let's quickly name this station nice and simple. We'll call it Warehouse 1. And then let's make a schedule. So we'll travel to Warehouse 1. Stay there until you picked up just over a thousand items. That's an amount of stacks. And then travel to Warehouse 2 until you have less than 10 items. Now, if we give that to you, are you going to go do your thing? Looks like it. He's off. So it should connect up and pick up some stuff from there. Oh, wait a minute. I need to put another funnel in. Yoink. So put that there. Then once he's got enough items, he should... Hopefully, come around here and drop it all off. If I've set things up correctly, which I think I may have done. Here he comes. Yes, look at that. And is that going into the correct places? It is. Excellent. We have a cheeky little transport system for our stuff here. Now we've just got a lot of tidying up to do. But the system works, which is awesome. And our logging train is still bringing all the wood over from the sawmill. So that should keep this thing stocked, which, to be honest, has got so much in it already. Look at that. But let's get this thing up here spinning next. So to keep this simple, my thinking is, can we just use a windmill bearing? Preferably rotated that way round. And we'll stick the iron there. And I'm hoping something as simple as that is going to spin it at a reasonable speed. Yeah, look at that. Nice and slow. That's exactly what we want. Yeah, look at that. Nice and subtle, but I love it. And it's very small as well, which is nice. But it doesn't look like it's attached to anything. I wonder if we can fix that. Maybe with some girders. Yeah, that's cool. I like that. Right, let's get flooring up here. I don't actually have anything to put up here yet. So for now, we're just going to cover the floor in jungle, put some torches down, and we're probably going to utilize this space down the line, most likely for some additional storage. But for now, we can just leave it empty. There we go. A nice big empty floor. And there's actually loads of space up there. I've also jammed a stairwell in the corner here. Nothing too fancy, but it should do the trick. I think I need some light here. Look, look at you. You should not be here. Has just occurred to me I haven't actually connected up all of these drawers yet, and I'm hoping if I just put a drawer controller here and then lock, that's going to lock absolutely everything. At least up to this point here. The question is, do we connect it up to this one as well? I mean, we probably could. We could just go underground, right? So let's just sneak some of these in. And now the question is, has that linked these drawers as well? Oh, it has. And I'm not going to lie, it's made me want to link it up to the other side as well. So let's do this. I need a few more trims. Now the question is, do all of those link up now? Looks like they do. Awesome. So if I use this drawer controller, that should take all the jungle wood off of me. It has. Excellent stuff. We've just got one massive linked storage system. Although I'm not going to lie, I'm not looking forward to actually organizing everything. That's going to take a while. For now, let's just be happy in the knowledge that it works. And while we're happy, what better time to crank on some funky music and get the rest of this build finished. <laughs>
short while later, we've made some pretty good progress around here. So I've replaced a lot of the ground around here with sort of coarse dirt and a couple of dirt variants. But I have left lots of available space here because as this area expands and we get more stuff coming over here, I imagine we're probably going to need to make use of this space. And we're going to be building other buildings and factories and things as well. So I think it makes sense just not to go too overboard over here just yet. But with that, we did also sort out this side of the yard. Once again, not too sure what I'm going to put here yet. So if you've got any ideas, do let me know in the comments. And I've also connected up the path here so the walkway goes into the building itself. And speaking of the building, I've started sorting out things because these are all things that we're going to be farming at some point in future, or at least most of them are. Some of them are just because we've got so much netherrack and so much deep slate. They should probably be here anyway. But I have started organizing things. So we've got our wall of create stuff over here. This wall here is going to be all of our sort of different block variants and things like that. We've got foliage and their variants and so on. This is going to be our wall of shinies. We've got all of our framed blocks around this side. We've got sort of macaws wall over here. And then we've got all the random bits of wooden stuff and things that we're going to get that aren't actually full logs. This section here doesn't really have much going on at the moment. And then I've got all my mob drops over here. So we've still got plenty of room to expand, lots to sort out still. But I'll do that in between episodes. You don't need to be bored with that. So one last thing we do need to do is to actually give this train a name. We gave it a temporary name last episode of The Shadow, which was pretty terrible, let's be honest. And there have been lots of awesome names submitted, but there was one name that came up time and time again. And to be honest, it's just absolutely wonderful. The Logomotive, which I know does look a bit like Logomotive, but it's not. It's the Logomotive. And as it's our wood delivery, train i think that suits perfectly so now the newly christened locomotive can be on its way onwards excellent stuff you'll also be pleased to know i have sorted out the flywheels and the log on that train that i kind of misplaced last episode thanks for pointing those out and good news we've just hit day 1000 in this world which is uh well it's quite epic we've actually done quite a lot in the thousand days i think we did well but sadly that's all we've got time for in today's episode i hope you've enjoyed it and i'll see you on the next one bye, -bye now